Okay, as you know, this is my realm, and I understand exactly what's going on here. They're talking about using hydrogen fuel cells. Well, what is a fuel cell? All it's doing is converting electricity. You have to have DC power. DC power. It's either a battery, or it's a generator, or it's coming off the grid, but you need power to force the electrons across this membrane and out as raw hydrogen. But if you don't have electricity, you can't do it. Well, what is electricity? Electricity is pushing electrons. Let's see if there's another way we can do this. Okay, here's what I'm proposing for hydrogen, use as hydrogen, is to literally to separate the hydrogen from the oxygen. Now, how would you do that? We'd do it the exact same way we did it here. We would force a concussion at the venturi, and the venturi slit would be like a membrane, so tiny that it would only let the white squishy ones come through, and the big black balls would just collect at here and go around exactly as they do here. And what are the black and white balls? Here they are right there. When they hit and concuss at the venturi, which is here, they have to separate. Now, what would we do? We would put a plunger in here to force oxygen and hydrogen together, which is water. H2O. So what, all you have is water in here. And you bam, 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 bam. And the little white ones would be able to get through, which are the hydrogens. The oxygens couldn't. They'd have to go around. And here's exactly how we could be able to do it. I believe this could be done. I see no reason not. You see what we did here? We only allowed the white through. We only going to allow the oxygen through. I mean the hydrogen through. Because hydrogen, size of hydrogen is a 1. The size of oxygen is 16. It's 16 times bigger than the hydrogen. We make these little slots tiny so the hydrogen can get through. And these can't. They'll start to collect here. Well, bam, 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 bam. We're going to pulsate it. This is the key. And a certain number of oscillations per second will and it'll just and just force these right through, just like we are here. Because this is what we're doing here. It's a pulse red laser. And that's why we'd be able to force, bam, 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 bam. It's like slapping them through there. And then they just go through and squirt out. Now, the white ones hate the other white ones. They will never touch another one. The black ones, they couldn't care less. They'll collect right on top of each other. And I can show you this. Everything I, I speak, speak about, I can show factually. I don't make comments that I can't support. You see this? I show you the black ones. They don't care about being on top of each other. You see them right here? They cannot get through. There's not one single black one here. Zero. Because they just can't get through. But you see them over here? They collect right on top of each other. They don't care about being on top of each other. See, they, that would never happen with white. They would never be that close. They'd never be like that. They just hate each other. They don't want to be next to each other. That's why you see all oh, nothing but blur here. Get away from me, I'll get away from you. And then they create these interference patterns, um, which are here. You see these? These are trails of electrons. And the black ones are jumping back onto them. They're starting to grab back onto them. That's fission. And this is now back to fusion. And you see right here, they start to come in. And they know this. This is only like... Pfft, almost no distance at all. This is so extremely magnified. So it comes back very quickly. So you'd have to have your collection plate, I mean, right behind the Venturi. But because these things are so small and the output is so enormous, you should be able to take something about like this. I've shown this many times. Now, here's what I'm going to recommend. It's possible, and it may be. And the people that are fighting against this, if we could have 30 or 60 days of research on this, we could test both the hydrogen pulsation membrane scheme and this. Because right out of here, we should be able to harvest raw energy. Hold on, i got my little diagram here. All right, right there. Right there is right here. Right here would be either the, the MIT just made a new little tiny heat engine that can absorb, because this is going to be like off the charts hot, I would believe. But it so quickly 
jumps back to the cold, because these are cold, cold as hell. There's no energetic value to these whatsoever other than attraction. That means they they will suck up heat just as fast as they can. So there's an enormous difference between this and this, temperature-wise, I believe. Again, this needs to be tested. I don't have the facilities to do this. We've worked on this for seven, eight years, not a single bit of interest. And if somebody doesn't do something about this, we're all going to die here on a planet that we're cooking to death with fossil fuels when all of this stuff is possibly available. I'm not saying 100% one way or the other, but they've spent 70 years of abject failure with Fermilab and CERN and all this. They, oh, well, we're going to, another 20 years, we'll be able to figure out what's going on, how gravity works. It's unbelievable. This is gravity. The black part's gravity. It only wants the white parts. Bring them back to me. All right? And when we do this, I think we can make a device about this size could power a house or who knows what. You carry it around with it. You don't have to plug this into anything. You plug your stuff into this, and electricity just comes out. You go 50 cycle, 60 cycle, 120 volts, 220, whatever you want. AC, DC, upside down, backwards, around and around the circle, anything. Just take off with your car and never stop for gas again. We're destroying the world. People are powerful because they have power based on destroying the earth and pulling the fossil fuels out of the earth and turning solid things into gases, which expands the envelope of the earth, which is destroying us. That's what's creating, uh, creating our global warming. And it's the scrub of the outer atmosphere of these particles against the particles in the space, which are the same particles. It's just like scrubbing your tires, spinning them against a medium of other particles. It's called friction. Do it on your hands. You'll feel exactly what's happening to our planet. Okay, I'm going to leave it at this. Again, Don Lincoln at Fermilab agrees with me. We have the dark particle and the glowy particle. This is fixed, never changes. I showed you that happens. This one's a little squirter, and it squirts through. And his last statement here is, in summary, extended particles have a fixed size. That's the black one, never changes. Although they may have a fuzzy edge around them, and they do. They have a little red fuzzy edge. I agree with that. Point-like particles are mathematic abstractions with a zero size. That's the, the red ones here, white, glowy ones. Now, I can't dispute that because they don't push anything. In the atomic bomb blasts, they just burn things, and then the heavy ones come and knock everything down, shown it a million times. He says even the zero size particles have an extended field, which they do. They have a huge field around them. And he says it's due to the effect of the field surrounding them. So, but surrounding what? Zero size particles. You know, there must be something there. But anyway, that, I agree, or he agrees with me. I have shown them. They've seen them. They just didn't know where they came from. I know where exactly where they came from. And we can squirt them out all day long using the technology that I have shown. I cannot continue forward with this. And all I've had was pushback against it. Oh, that can't work. We're not going to try it out. You're stupid. Get away from us. Don't ever talk to us again. And that's all I've had from every one of the people that I presented this to. It's time that we get something done for our money. This is a government agency. They should be taking a look at this. They refuse to. Absolutely refuse. All right. I think I've shown more than enough evidence to support the fact that light turns into these particles. Light is nothing more than this. There's the dark matter, and I showed we can separate them. I mean, all of that has been shown and undeniable because it's easily done. But I need somebody, not me, to do this. And all I've had was pushback. Oh, just go ahead and do it. But Well, they spent 70 years spending billions of trillions, probably, of dollars and haven't gotten anywhere. And all I want is 30 days or 60 days to prove one way or the other. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I can help, and I want to help. And if we could do this, the world changes like that. This is what we can do as harvesters. And if we can, this is the kind of devices you'll be carrying in the woods, to your camp, to your out, to out, out in the woods to fight fires, Anywhere you want, you carry this around. You'd never have to buy gasoline again. And that will change the dynamic of the whole world. And this has been known to everybody, so I'm not hiding anything, and nobody can hide it anymore. If somebody wants to finally do something about it, maybe we can get the hell off of this ridiculous case we're on, destroying the Earth. Now, 
not only should we be able to harvest energy here, we could get it out of oxygen and hydrogen, all right, which is water. You flush this thing with water. Now you need electricity. All right, so what you're doing is forcing the extra negatives to go through this membrane, which ends up driving the hydrogen off of the oxygen. And the oxygen ends up coming, or not actually getting through, is what it boils down to. The oxygen doesn't get through in this direction. It gets through in this direction. So now we have hydrogen coming out, and the oxygen goes back here, and the oxygen goes out. But you have to power that. Better this way. We go smacking it. All right, the water comes in here, and we have a bam, 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 like an injector squirter in here. And that will, again, 16 times bigger. The hydrogen is one. That can get through these little tiny slits. The oxygen is just gigantic, just like the black particles I showed you before. Now, could we make a big membrane here? I don't know. But we're going to get pure oxygen out of here if it was done correctly with the correct Venturi type of design. Now, we may have to do it in this manner. But again, we have the, the oxygen is 29,000 electrons. The hydrogens are 1,839 electrons, these two. They're both balls. They have the black and white matter together, both of them. But these are tiny balls, the hydrogens. This is the big one. We slam all that through here, and this one doesn't go. It can't get through. Through the Venturi, exactly like we did with our light experiment, what we would shoot out of here would be hydrogen, which is the tiny particle. All it is is a tiny little orifice. The big one, they're fixed particles. They can't crush. Now, they might be able to crush if they're oxygen, but we can't crush them once they get down to the size we're working at with light. You cannot crush those. Those are fixed particles. Fermi Lab agrees with me. Fixed particle, no crusher.